So it is 6.31 and I'm going to call BUHS number 6 meeting to order for Monday, February 4th. Um, and the first thing on our agenda is a public information meeting in anticipation of next week's annual meeting. Um, and up here between Frank and Bob there are the big books for the annual meeting, if anybody that's present doesn't have one already, um, they're here. And page seven in there is our annual meeting notices. So it's the, which we decided on at our last meeting. Um, so that's all listed. And and, and I figured maybe Frank could explain what we're doing in relation to the budget to the best of our ability. Um, at our last meeting, we did a very in-depth going over the budgets, you know, line by line, section by section, school by school. I figured we didn't do that again, but go more into in-depth as to why, for instance, there's not a warning article about the budget for next week's meeting mm -hmm. and what our plan going forward is. And that, that budget was voted on by the board last time. Last or last week. I forget. Yep. Informational so, budget at this point. Sure. I mean, Thanks, uh, Frank. We can do that. And also, um, in the uh, booklet here that we've just uh, made available, page nine, um, we have the budget question and answer section that uh, does give the, a similar kind of a background on the uh, budget development process, the transition from where we have been to, uh, to the new uh, structures that the State Board of Ed has um, made decisions on as of November 30th. So um, what, I'll make some comments and they kind of generally follow those, uh, that narrative there. Um, so the uh, Finance Committee and board engaged in budget development as we typically have and we have made those deliberations available on the Wyndham Southeast Supervisory Union website. So there is a fiscal year 20, uh, what we call an informational budget uh, that the board has seen and it's available to the public. But as Ricky's pointing out, this document doesn't have a fiscal year 20 uh, proposed budget as we normally uh, would typically have in preparation for the annual meeting on February 12th. And the reason for that is the State Board's action on November 30th, 2018, essentially implemented Act 46, which says a uh, merged entity will be created in July that will uh, assume the public education responsibility that formally was provided by the separate districts of Brattleboro Union High School, um, the Dummerston School District, the uh, Guilford School District, and the Putney School District, along with the Brattleboro Town School District. So um, as a result of the State Board's action, the law um, essentially compels a new district to be formed. It's been warned for February 27th um, of this year uh, that essentially creates a transition board and the deliberations I just referred to around the fiscal year 20 proposal would go to that transition board. So the Finance Committee and the board's consideration of fiscal year 20 uh, for Bradbury Union High School, this site, Regional and um, Bradbury Area Middle School uh, will will go in the form of your motion um, to present <coughs> a recommendation to the transition board, um, and that board then recommends a, a, a merged budget to an elected board. Um, the timeline of that is to be determined at the February 27th meeting when, when the transition board um, assumes their authority that's given to them by the state board and the statutes. 
So a tentative timeline, we don't know what it is, but a tentative timeline would be something like new, a new entity is formed February 27th, transition board makes, uh, sets a date um, for the election of the permanent board, um, and they set the date for the annual meeting for which the budget, fiscal year 20 budget, would be voted by the electorate for the entire region of those, those um, five former districts that I mentioned. Um, tentative timeline is, you know, possibly a, a March or April election, and then a May, April, May, and or June uh, annual meeting um, to vote, and then we become operational July 1st. So that's the current law. Subsequent to that, there's been, since this board's taken the action that I just described, there's been a couple of developments um, that uh, that the Brattleboro Town Board has taken into consideration. Um, and I, I did want to mention that, just so you, you're you aware of the difference between our uh, public format in terms of engaging the public around fiscal year 20 versus what the local school board has done. So before I mention that, did you want to I, make a comment? Uh, when you finish up, I just have a okay. big go ahead here. Yeah. You're on a roll. So the, yeah, the last piece of this is that, so uh, Brattleboro Union took their action, this, this board took their action in, in uh, the first week in um, January, and at, as of that time, there was no uh, litigation actually um, uh, taken against the State Board of Ed, and there were no bills in the legislature to uh, potentially delay uh, the merger, the timeline of the merger. Uh, but in the last, since January 4th, <coughs> both of those two developments have occurred, and as a result, the Brattleboro um, Town School District Board uh, sought legal advice through the supervisor union um, superintendent um, and the advice we we received was it's okay to include a warning in front of the voters for the March town meetings that has contingency language that provides for in the event the law is delayed or changed or stayed by the courts that there could be a vote uh, on the um, on the what's considered right now an informational budget um, for those districts. So uh, at this point, the Brattleboro Town and the Putney uh, School District have included that language in their warnings. That, that's right, Ian, right, in Putney? Yes, we as did. well. Yeah. Because our legal advice says maybe we might be not in keeping with law that already existed if we don't warn at least something. Yep. So we decided to cover all of the bases. Yep. And uh, the, the Guilford Board proceeded under the same assumptions that the Bradbury Union Board has, which is there is no fiscal year 20 in their annual report, um, and they are, but they're making the information available on the website that said if the transition board forms, here's the proposal. Um, and then the uh, Dummerston Board has moved, the, the school district board of Dummerston has moved ahead um, under the conventional uh, process um, that has been used in the past. Um, Without any language in it, correct? And that's my understanding, yeah. Um, and so this reflects developments that have occurred in the last 45 days. Um, and at, at this point, though, there is still no change to the law. There are these uh, pending developments, but, but there, the law is still uh, what, what it was as of November 30. Um, so that's uh, the process. Just to kind of recap all of that in a couple of sentences is no budget vote February 12th, um, February 27th, a organizational meeting forms an entity that will consider the fiscal year 20 uh, budget uh, for the entire region, and we are waiting for 
pending either legislation or actions from the court that may affect that. But at this point, that's what's in place. So what happens if we don't pass a budget, the courts strike the law down, and we then have no budget? Wouldn't it yes. make more sense to approve a provisional budget? And that's what the Brattleboro Town has done, given these new developments that didn't exist when you made that decision to warn the February 12th. And of course, you did that because you're a whole month earlier. I, and I thought we had discussed a provisional budget last in our last meeting. Yes, we did, and and we sought legal counsel. And at the time, the legal counsel said uh, you should not. Uh, defer from what the provisions of current law are. Um, that same council has uh, revised their advice based on the development. But we did approve that in the last meeting, so we could add it back in. You you could, but we couldn't do it at this point just because you have to have worn um, worn a uh, article 30 days prior to the the meeting date. So to answer your question, if if uh, if the law is changed uh, at this point, which says let's follow the former governance structure where BUHS exists as a separate entity as of July 1st, 2019, we will have to have a separate district meeting, a special district so meeting. Really what you're saying is no matter what happens, we're gonna have to have a special meeting and it might just be a special meeting for BUHS number six, or it could be a special meeting for the entire entity if it is merged. That's right. But there's going to have to be a special meeting, yeah. and it really came down to time. Yeah, because we're too late for the for the yeah, morning. Right, right. because the Brattleboro Town and Putney they have until town meeting day to make to so they so they have time to do that where we don't have that because our meeting is an entire month early. Yeah. So <clears throat> I just would like to point out because there may be somebody watching may be a confusion. Like, there is no budget vote on February 12th. However, the meeting will be still, the district meeting will still be held. There are seven other items, uh, which are primarily election of, of, of officials. And it, it's on page seven, if you want to look in the book. Um, it said, it specifically this year says to elect these positions to serve for a period of one year or until a district is dissolved, whichever comes first. So. We will elect officers for the time being, and then when the new organization, whatever it is, is formed, we would elect, um, we would, they would elect their own officials. So there will be a, there will be a meeting, mm -hmm. as I understand, and it's, a, it's the same because it's already been warned, and it's at the same time. Just will not be a uh, <coughs> review of the FY20 budget. Right. And the main rationale for that is that Bradboro Union High School, along with all of the current separate districts, exist uh, as, as legal entities through June 30th. Uh, and we need a governing body uh, to serve as, as you have in the past. And that, that is, as Mr. Woodworth has said, uh, the primary purpose of the December, uh, the February 12th meeting. Any other questions about next week's meeting or the process from anybody? I mean, it's not, I, I think it's, I think we'd all agree it's not ideal, but the pro, this whole process hasn't been, um, it's the best that we can do, <laughs> given the limitations that we have so that we're meeting our obligations for February 12th. Yeah, yeah John. Can I just, we did have a motion to accept the budget as proposed last meeting so yes what is exactly and that passed um so how, how does that go forward so that's when the uh, transition board is is activated by the, the february 27 public meeting that essentially authorizes them to um, act on behalf of the new district they will consider the budget that you're referring to a along with the Dummerston budget, the Putney budget, the Guilford budget, the Bradley Town budget. But then they won't, will not be voted on until that annual meeting is set. That's that special meeting the, is put together. By the uh, transition board. That's actually part of the warning articles yeah, on February 27th. So yeah. 
it's um, it's actually the electorate that will set that annual meeting. The transition board sets the date of the uh, board election, but the um, the actual the, the electorate uh, sets the annual meeting. And that will be done on the 27th. Yes. Yeah, and my understanding of it too is that us us approving the but proposed budget that we did at our la at our last meeting was so that the transitional board members from our board could say to all the other transitional board members, our board has approved this budget for our entity, so for our three schools. And presumably the Brattleboro Town would do the same thing, mm -hmm. Putney, Dummerston, Guilford, they would all do the same thing and say that our board has approved this as our budget for our, our entity. And then the budget that would go in front of that new annual meeting, assuming a merger do does completely happen, would be up to Frank and the folks in central office to compile those five budgets into one one major budget. But it needed to have some sort of approval so that, just to streamline the process so that the tr new transitional board doesn't have to review all five budgets, you know, line item by line item. At least it's been done by everybody. So that means that the, uh, in this scenario, the budgets will not be approved until June, is that correct? Um, they, they may set the, uh, the meeting earlier than that, so it could be in May. It seems unlikely it would be much earlier than May, just because of the six Monday to elect a board member, and if yeah. we don't get started until the end of February, six Mondays, it would be the earliest <clears throat> for an election. And then they need 30 days uh, to uh, warn the budget and the you know the, the articles for that in meeting. So, and that all works in the timeline going from there to July one. Yes. Um, and the tax rates and everything. Does yeah. that does that affect the tax rate setting of the tax? Rate? Uh, yeah, it will. It will be recalculated just as the uh, the the uh, tax rate that we have calculated for each individual district. Um, that that exercise will be done for the new merge. <coughs> Which is just that formula that you spoke on, the numbers of students. Yep. So yep. Do you have any idea of the impact of that condensed budget versus individual budgets? Is it going to, is it going to be a huge swing? Is it, is it any idea of the man with numbers? You got to have. Well, I, I wouldn't want to speak, um, you know, on behalf of a of a future board that hasn't even met yet. Uh, it, it, you know, I, I, even though as Ricky has said. Um, we, we certainly have a good idea of what the elected individual boards have developed for um, proposals, but, but it's, it's very much from a statutory point of view, uh, this future board's uh, discretion as to what, uh, what is presented to the general public, and I, I wouldn't want to speak on behalf of that. Um, but I can say that based on what each individual board as Brattleboro Union High School has done, uh, the uh, proposed spending is, is um, uh, close to uh, this, the, the <coughs> inflation rate of around 2.5%, um, but we do have a higher spending uh, proposal uh, in, a, in, in a district that is uh, adding a pre-K program. Um, so and that's in Dummerston. So, you know, there there is some variation there, um, but uh, I think each board, just as Bradbury Union High School did, said um, we feel that the uh, the budget development process not only meets student needs, but it also is fiscally responsible. So there's there's no proposal that where a board has ignored uh, potential impact if. Um, they had to face their own public as they have in the past. It's, it's possible there might down the road be some changes based on assessment, difference, differences in assessments once yeah. it's all put together. Yeah. I would think those areas would yeah. change. Yeah. yeah. But that's not a major, I mean, if you add them all together, it's going to be about the same as it would been. Yeah. On page 15, is, uh, it speaks to that um, 
your question, Sean. The um, the the agency of Ed provides this uh, format, you know, a document that estimates a tax rate, and um, we have the historical document here for Broadboro Union. Um, but the, the the new merged system will use the same document, same format, same methodology to calculate a single tax rate for the merged entry en entity. And then, uh, assuming the law does remain as it is, there would just be one school property tax rate for Bradbury Town, the BUHS, and you know, school. It's not a separate entity. The Guilford School, the Putney School District, former school district. Um, uh, th that one number will go to all the town offices, and uh, that would be the basis for uh, funding the uh, general state support grant for the new year. So on, the, on this page, uh, so 15, you just referred to that, um, that tax rate is, that is indicated on line 15, right? Yeah. So that, um, it doesn't really show a substantial change at all from the previous year. Well, this is this fiscal year 19. Year. Yeah, this is not a projection. Oh, okay. 20, yeah. Okay, no, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, 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 right thank again. You. Yeah. Yeah. Now, on our website, uh, we, we do have the fiscal year 20 projection with the same document that, 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 that uh, shows a similar, you know, not, not a significant increase, uh, about, a, about a 2%. Um, right, and that was the one that was uh, brought before us in the last. Yes. yes, the second half of this document, page 15, um, goes away because the second half of the document allocates a proportion of the dollar seventy to each of the separate districts. That that all goes away. There there is no allocation because there's one district. Because there's one district. It's K through 12, and it also includes pre-K. Okay, I have a question. Yes. Um, is there a, a warning and agenda for the transitional board meeting that's available yet? I think it is on the website. I can check it right now. Yeah, it's on the Wyndham website under WS. E U U S D Wyndham Southeast Unified Union School District. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Anything else related to our meeting next week? Questions? So that's um, Tuesday the twelfth, <coughs> seven o'clock, BUHS gym, um, as it usually is. So I do have, will, will yeah. questions be answered about the informational budget that we passed last meeting, or is that not open for discussion at Tuesday's meeting? My, my knowledge is not really open to discussion because it's going to a different entity. Yeah, it seems like it depends on what the moderator decides, but a moderator, you know, has to stay with what's germane to the warning articles. Um, and, um, you know, the, the only area where I would I would think it might it might be um, relevant is um, Article Seven, you know, right. to transact any other business that may be legally come before the meeting. But typically, that's not a binding uh, discussion because the public needs to be warned before uh, something can be binding. I have a question. Yep. How can we? Vote on what salaries to uh, okay. pay officers and directors if we're not voting on a budget. It's going to be it's going to be prorated from the mark from town meeting day to the end to January to June thirtieth. Mm -hmm. It has to, because, like for instance, I don't. Is anybody is there anybody seat up on town meeting day? Like so, if Bob doesn't rerun for his seat, somebody from Brattleboro is going to have to run for just the component from town meeting day to the end of June, given the current existing situation. So to do that appropriately, thank you. 
um, to, for the office for, for the stipend that the officers and the directors get, and it'd be prorated for those three months, four months, which is coming out of this budget, not the next budget. Yeah. And that's why it. Uh, yeah. So it's not part of the next budget. It's part of this budget. It'll be part of this budget, and it's pro. It'll be, and it's just a prorated for those four months because part of what the transitional board and the new entities might have to decide is what stipends are given because from the bit that I've learned from talking to other boards, we're kind of everybody's kind of all over the place. <laughs> um, so, but this is the article that's always been in our annual meeting. Right. So yeah. probably just as it has been. Right, yeah, but, it'd be a, but it's going to be a prorated amount, so the yeah. question yeah. may come up on Tuesday, and we'll just have to be able to say right. that essentially it's going to be prorated just for the remainder of this fiscal year. Mm -hmm. so unless something happens, just stop, merge at least temporarily. Right. right. Yeah. In my, my petition, um, I, I filled out a petition so that I could complete this last few months, but my petition actually shows a three-year term, but then that will become moved theoretically fairly soon, but that would allow me to make it through to the end of June. I Thank guess you. I was the only one in Brattleboro that was due. Right. Well, would there be any value at all to talking about um, if, if a delay occurs? Or is that really not germane to what we're talking about right now? I think, I think well, Ian's, just said we did. Yeah, Ian's question, you know, it, but we didn't get specific about um, a timeline. But but I think um, it would be if if there was a stay or an injunction, um, or if the legislature um, <coughs> makes a deferral, uh, then our our time constraints are. Uh, warning uh, 30 to 40 days uh, prior to a new, a new special district meeting um, and then we have our, our public information hearings that we would share so um, the, the reaction time would be probably at least 45 days I would, I would say from the new information uh, that, that comes do we have to do all the same public information hearings, even, even if we're presenting the exact same budget that we already did public information hearings on? I believe it has to be within 10 days. Yeah, um, days. Right. right. Because of that part. Because if, yeah. if there's any sort of stay comes into place, we have to go back to the old system. And so the old system has all of those regulations in it that we have to, would have to meet. So yeah, we'd have to do it over again. You ought to know the numbers pretty well by that time. Yeah. There'll probably be a lot less questions because they're all over there. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Any other questions related to next Tuesday night's meeting? All right. Seeing none. So why don't we go ahead and move into the clerk's report. And is there a motion to approve the minutes of our January 7th meeting? Move that we approve the minutes of January 7th, 2019. Second. Moved and seconded. Any additions, deletions, corrections, changes we need to make to those minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstention? Okay. Approved. Do any board members have any communications to share with everyone that have come since our last meeting? Move on. Um, to recognition of groups and or individual visitors, except for those of us that are at the table that normally speak. You want to share why you're here? Franz? Franz? Do you want to share why you're here? Oh, um, <laughs> I'm here um, because I'm on the representative town meeting finance committee and I'm trying to keep track of all the craziness related to budget matters these days so um, my main concern was what has already transpired thus far excellent thank you yeah 
just for sharing for people at home. All right, is there a motion to enter consent agenda? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so let's start with finance, building, and transportation. Okay, uh, we met on the 24th of January and we had a fair number of warrants to prove. I'll, I'll go through as quickly as I can. Uh, warrants numbers 1107, 8, 10, 11, 12, 14, and 15 in the amount of $62,790.39. Uh, warrants numbers 1116 through 1123 in the amount of $373,356.97. Warrants <coughs> numbers 1124, 1126, 1128, and 1129, 30, 33, 34, and 35 in the amount of $430,176.35. And then lastly, uh, warrants numbers 1136 through 40, and 42 through 48, totaling $130,962.17. Those were warrants represented from December 3rd through January 22nd. We also approved two payrolls, December 7th payroll in the amount of $541,256, and December 21st payrolls in the amount of $517,000, $661.49. Uh, in addition, we spent some time reviewing the uh, proposed capital plan working out for the next three or four years and uh, spent some time on with the administrators discussing the, our campus plan in terms of the exterior, basically the fields. And uh, we are in the process of uh, uh, doing a, uh, some studying regarding a, a turf field, and uh, we will be having some more information on that soon. And uh, we got an update on other other areas of the, the campus uh, um, discussion, a little bit of the Team Tenney proposal to uh, repair the grandstand and some, uh, uh, particular points that we need to have clarified. We wrote them a letter accordingly before we can approve it, move ahead with that. Uh, update on the practice field renovations, which are uh, under underway, done, or? Uh, done as far as they can be with the winter. In the winter, yeah. Right. Uh, so we are, we are spending time on the campus plan, particularly outside, because there's uh, a lot of uh, things to think about for the future. That was uh, the basis of our meeting on the 24th. We do not have a meeting scheduled, another meeting scheduled quite yet. We will probably have one before too long, but uh, nothing right this minute. Great, thank you. Um, WSCSU Finance Committee. Yes, not met. Planning and Policy. Uh, planning and Policy met this evening uh, to have hear a pre presentation of where a uh, group of students is so far with the student voice flag. Uh, they have put together an application form. Um, the application form asks for a group name and what type of group, whether it's a formal student group, which would be something with an actual faculty advisor or an informal group. Um, what flag do you wish to raise? Please include an image. <coughs> Meaning of this flag, including history, as part of history or organization it represents. Why do you believe your request is currently relevant to the BUHS community? How will it benefit the BUHS community? Summarize your group's past advocacy and future plans for outreach and the requested length of time for the flag to be flown. Uh, they also detailed a committee structure to uh, process and consider these applications. Uh, the committee will have three representatives from each uh, class and three staff members. Uh, so far they're making excellent progress, I think, on um, coming up with a plan to handle this. And I love the fact that it's a student-led effort uh, to determine what 
what they want in their school. Okay. Excellent, thank you. Um, teacher curriculum committee. Has not met, but I'm hoping that we will have a 1% uh, fund report maybe at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, BAMS committee. Uh, BAMS has not met. WRCC. Has not met. <clears throat> Is there a motion to approve consent agenda? So moved. Also <coughs> seconded. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Opposed to abstentions? No. Okay. Let's move to administrative reports. And why don't we start the with, with BAMS? Hi, everyone. Uh, <clears throat> this one January event I wanted to highlight um, the WRCC Circuits Arts Program came and visited BAMS in the middle of January, and their show was incredible. They did about a half an hour performance for our students and staff twice. They did one for seventh grade, one for eighth grade, and amazing skills, uh, great. Your the students at the Career Center were really uh, good representatives of their program, and I was really impressed with uh, the skill and the athleticism and the performances of their their students you could really tell it's a high quality program just just seeing that preview so I uh, wanted to thank the Career Center um, kids and administration and teachers um, uh, we had an in-service recently uh, last week and the uh, members of the rescue Inc. program uh, Re rescue Inc. came and did and Steve might speak a little bit about it as well, but they did something called Stop the Bleed, which is a training on literally how to stop um, serious bleeding uh, in an emergency. And um, I think uh, Ms. Holiday would like to have this uh, be something that all schools are doing throughout the SU and all teachers have training in. So, um, <clears throat> The, the presenters were excellent. Um, the high school and middle school staff got together to see a kind of introductory, um, introductory uh, slideshow, and then uh, we separated to do some hands-on, mainly doing tourniquets and figuring out how those work and all of that, um, and checking out updated equipment and learning about new uh, new techniques in dealing with tourniquets because there's a lot of misconceptions. I think what we were taught 10 or 10 years or longer ago, so a lot of things are no longer valid, so it's very interesting. Um, and we're very appreciative. Linda Rinder, our school, one of our school nurses, uh, really set that up and did a fine job. Today and tomorrow, the eighth grade students are touring uh, the Career Center, and I've heard great things so far about the tours and the really um, teachers are impressed. Our teachers are impressed with, with what's going on over there and um, I think I might have to pop over tomorrow and <laughs> check out what's going on. Um, this Friday night we have a dance and there's parent night during the dance. Junior Prayer heads that up and uh, hoping to, all parents are invited to that. We go to Vernon School one of our first steps in our transition, starting to transition sixth graders into seventh grade, and I already get, I'm already receiving emails from parents having questions about seventh grade. So um, we're going to Vernon on the 11th to meet with parents there and answer questions. That's an annual thing we do. The 13th, we're excited to have a preview of Pippin. Um, high schools perform in Pippin, and they'll do a preview for us, and I think the high school as well, right? And uh, then week of the 18th, February break. So coming up, that's all I have. Is there any questions? Not really a question, but I do want to say that the electronic newsletter that's coming out from BAMS yep. is really, really informative, and it's really great to see the pictures and stuff. Oh like yeah, that. good. Thank you. I yeah. appreciate seeing that. Yeah. No, I just want to get. Yeah. So it's a really nice thing. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Let's move to the high school. Sure. <clears throat> so. Um, a lot of things happening at the high school. Um, I guess I want to follow up first on, on what Dave talked about with Stop the Bleed. You know, we were really glad to do that in service 
Um, but I do want to highlight that uh, Stop the Bleed is, is not something that is just intended for school audiences, that it is intended for um, everybody. It's, it's really not, you know, it's kind of, Rescue's hoping that this develops into something like first aid or CPR. That it's not something that happens because we're in a high school or that we're in a school, because a lot of the examples that Drew and the rest of his team used is they talked about <clears throat> accidents with chainsaws, they talked about um, hunting accidents, they talked about you know other ways that people can get hurt. So I, I, I do feel like I want to stress that it wasn't just about um, us getting trained because we were in a school, that it was really something that we can use anywhere. And he, he used the sad example of the Las Vegas shooting, uh, he used the example of the synagogue shooting and, and the Pulse nightclub as well as as times when you know people just come into bad situations and that it's just like CPR it's just a good skill to have and be ready to use and uh, it was it was daunting but it was very well done and uh, rescued a fantastic job um, along those well not even along those same lines but on the same day we spent some time talking a little bit about um, community expectations and a little bit about um, how we're socialized, and Michaela Sims did a nice job of, of working with the faculty, talking about how do we, as, as adults, how are we socialized in our lives, and also how we've been socialized um, when we're younger, and how does that affect our um, implicit unspoken biases, and how do we hold those biases, and how do we examine those. That's the opening of a series that we're gonna have Michaela work with our teachers in small departments to talk a little bit more about um, you know, what does the word supremacy mean? And that's actually how she opened, by asking us, you know, what was our first exposure to that word? And it was interesting that uh, several people from a military background said, well, supremacy comes, you know, from the Cold War, where we were all trying to, you know, have supremacy. And then our millennials took it another direction, and they talked about supremacy in, in the terms of white supremacy. So that alone is a really interesting exercise. So I'm looking forward to what Michaela continues to do with the faculty as we kind of work through that uh, for the rest of the year. That's a follow-up to our culture work that we did in the fall. We're gonna segue now and talk a little bit more about um, how we socialize and how do we express it, how we're socialized in our classrooms. Along those same lines, uh, a group of teachers led by Kate Margaitis have put together a statement of community expectations that we asked all of our teachers to read when we began first semester, or when we began second semester. It felt like first semester went on for a long time. Um, and our, in our sta statement of expectations, we really asked that our staff and our students at BUHS really understand that, that we're all responsible for creating a safe, supportive environment, that we recognize the qualities and characteristics that each of us bring to this school community, and we talked about specifically that we do prohibit the use of language that is homophobic, supremacist, racist, fascist, anti-Semitic, ableist, transphobic, or misogynistic. And based on what's happened in public discourse recently, we felt that it was necessary for us to kind of say that we as a community stand to uh, oppose these ideals and that we as a community really believe that we all have to contribute and maintain a safe, productive environment. And, um, you know, a lot of kudos to Kate Margaitis and those teachers for the work they did getting that ready. And uh, I'm glad they could do that. And it was very well received by our staff as well. Uh, a couple of events coming up. This Thursday, we are welcoming the class of 2023, their parents, to VUHS for our eighth grade parent night at 6.30. Um, we're looking forward to getting to know them. You know, as we've done in years past, we'll do a quick introduction to parents. Uh, we'll then let them spend some time with individual department heads to talk about specific concerns they have. And uh, myself and the other administrators will give tours of our great facility. As Keith pointed out, Pippin is coming up on the 14th, 15th, and 16th. And uh, as usual, Bob Kramsky, Steve Rice, Michelle Page, and the rest of the folks have done a great job of putting together a, a great show. And I hope board members can make it to that. It's a lot of fun. It seems that every year for the past five or six, I've been at the same performance as you, right? So uh, uh, it's always a, a, a fun show. Um, I misspoke at one of our earlier board meetings, and I wanted to correct that. I, I made a mistake when I said that we had had 32 students to leave BUHS. That was wrong. Um, what 
I should have said is we have had 32 entries and or exits. And um, looking at things as of the 25th of January, um, we have had 20 students leave the UHS. Um, and I'll detail that in a second. And we've had 16 students come into the UHS. Of those 16 students that have come in, one of them was uh, a refugee seeking asylum. Um, that person attended BUHS for about a week and then left. So they are counted as somebody who came in. They're also counted as a dropout. So uh, we've had five students come into BUHS from other in-state high schools, and we've had nine students come from out of state. So that's our 16 entries. Um, in terms of students that departing, you know, we had the one student, an asylum seeker, who left. We've had four students unenroll and enroll in Vermont Adult Learning. Um, that's part of Act 176, which uh, we support, where students who unenroll can actually obtain a BUHS diploma by completing an individual education plan or individual graduation plan, where they actually fulfill the requirements and they're, they're awarded a BUHS diploma. We had six students who did not return. Uh, from last year and so what happens is when the school year ends we do have students that uh, choose not to come back but because they're on our rolls we do carry them on our rolls so even though they never set foot in the building again they are counted as our dropouts we had one student actually who entered BOHS uh, for the first time on the 24th of August never attended school and was subsequently dropped and so that student, though, does count as a dropout. And we've had 10 students who have transferred to other schools. Some of, those, some of those placements are schools, some of those are residential placements and therapeutic settings. So I, I apologize that I was, I was incorrect when I said 32, that, was, that number was wrong. So I wanted to make sure I had that right. I hate being wrong. Um, I have a request. We have a, a group of students who are traveling to Italy in April with Heather Cohen and two other teachers. This trip was originally scheduled for June, uh, but the trip's been moved up to April. They're gonna be leaving on April 11th, spending three days in Rome and three days in Florence. Uh, and uh, I would ask that the board um, allow us to get substitutes for, the, for Heather and the two chaperones for the end of the day, Thursday and Friday, and then also um, cover student insurance for the length of that trip. Is there a motion? So move. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? So I, this, yeah, ask okay. a question. What do we are we teaching it? To, I mean, what, what's the focus of the, the sure. course? Uh, uh, the Heather spent some time studying um, Italian history mm -hmm. and Italian architecture, and so she um, has been doing this for a couple of years, and you know, decided that she would like to take a group of students. It's not a formal class, though. They're they're going to go over it. And uh, I have the itinerary if you want to see it in detail. It's an educational foundation trip, so. I think Italy does have both history and architecture, and, and a lot of both. Yeah. So How many students do? Uh, right now it's 18, so it's a good group. And then do you mention the insurance writer also? Yes, that's it. That's a massive yeah. part yeah. of it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Um, we're also coming up on the time of year where we do our Smarter Balanced Assessment Test for our ninth graders. And um, we're doing those on the 23rd and 24th of April. Um, we're trying to sandwich it in with spring sports. We're also doing the Science Assessment, the Vermont State Science Assessment, and we're going to do that on the 24th. Um, with the board's permission, we would like to do an early release on those days at 1130. Um, we started doing that a couple of years ago. What that allows us to do is rather than cancel classes, um, it allows us to test in smaller groups and kind of focus the testing on those students on those particular days rather than trying to uh, shuffle students and teachers to various places. And this way we kind of contain it to you know, two half days of chaos rather than than a week of chaos as we've done in the past. So I'd ask the board to approve that in 20, for April 23rd and April 24th. I move we approve the uh, request for half days on April 20th and 
24th, 23rd, 23rd and 24th to facilitate the smarter balance assessment. Second. We're going to second it. Any questions? What What is the smarter balance exams? The one you said a few years ago. The one you, <laughs> I'm sorry? Remember the ones you took in the lab? Oh, those. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that's um, required or suggested by who? It is. It's required by the agency. And we used to do it for uh, 11th graders. And then two years ago, actually last year was the first time that they made the decision that we'll test 9th graders instead of 11th graders. And then we do test 11th graders in the science assessment. And then the results are there just for publication? Or? They are. Yeah. We use, you know, especially with the science, we've used those results to kind of craft our current um, three core sequence in the science department. So we use the data ourselves. You know, so you use the data to improve, but not, I mean, are you um, redesigning the classes to meet the test, or are you using the test input to do, as a, as a former science teacher, once right. a scientist, always a scientist? So what, what we recognize with the science, I can speak to the science better. What we recognize with the science is that as we were looking at test scores, that we were doing a really um, bad job of doing earth and space science. Because what happened is students were getting earth and space science um, K-8, and then we weren't teaching it. It was an elective that was taught to juniors and seniors. And we were testing juniors at that time. And so what we realized is that we were doing a really bad job of covering that material in high school. So now what we do is we now teach Earth and Space Science to ninth graders. So they come from BAMs where they've had physical science or Dummerston or Putney where they've had physical science, life science, and then we teach Earth Science and then they take the test then. And that, you know, hopefully, and this will be the second year of the testing, we'll have better data and, and better progress for our students. So I guess I'm saying so, is it, you're doing that either to improve performance on a test that's reported or is it doing it because you think pedagogically teaching this is, is important and, and the test showed right. a void that needed to be filled for learning reasons, not just for testing? I think it really showed a void. You know, I think we really looked when we were doing the, you know, even when I was a teacher, we would, we would do the testing in 11th grade and we'd realize that you know, our students, they knew plate tectonics maybe, but they didn't know what the Coriolis effect was because we hadn't gone into in-depth in Earth and space science, so we needed to do a better job with that. So, you know, what we were doing is we were actually offering um, two physical science classes, one in ninth grade, one in eleventh grade, and not really doing a good job of offering Earth and space. So, you know, that was the motivation to adjust that. So. Yes, facts are mandatory. Excuse me? They're mandatory. They are, yes. Every student takes Earth and space and biology. And then in 11th grade, they can either take Intro to Chem and Physics, which is a combined course, or they can take Chemistry and then Physics. So, in 11th and 12th grade. Can I add, can I add to it? I'm sure you, know, you yeah. can add. Well, um, yeah, so the SBACs are, they replace the NECAP mm -hmm. tests, so they're grades three to, three to nine now. And, uh, See, the science is just grade eight and just grade 11, four, eight, and 11. Right. So they've, they've taken all the pen and pencil or pencil and paper tests and made them computerized. And it's a, we get, uh, it's part of the, the federal government's kind of, it used to be no child left behind. And so there's some accountability with it. Uh, last year was a pilot with the science, with the electronic science test this year it will count. Um, we put a lot of focus certainly on the uh, math and ELA tests. At BAMS we certainly uh, spend a lot of time because you get individual results for SBACs and then you can also break it down by you can look at rosters and you can break down trends systemically so you can look at you know how's our curriculum mapping working, um, are there areas we're not covering enough in our classes and then uh, we use SBAC results to take a look at, do those students need uh, supplemental support, such as like a academic support class um, or a skills block, addressing it a certain way. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty reasonable measure. It's a pretty reasonable measure of literacy and math. We're not sure about the science yet because we really haven't 
had a chance to look at it, but uh, you know, I'm sure the kids just love it, don't you? Absolutely. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it's useful. Okay. Uh, just a procedural question. Um, is the schedule change uh, something that the board would normally approve? I don't remember having done that before, or is it just that you're looking for an affirmation of? I'm looking. It's more informative. Informative. Okay. Right. right. But you do have to. Uh, you do. Uh, you do have to approve if we go to a less than a a full day. <laughs> Can't remember we ever did that. No. It's first time enough. for everything. Okay. So, we have. <laughs> All right. so we still have a motion on the floor. Could have been doing half Any other before. questions related <laughs> to the testing piece? All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed abstentions? No. Okay, great. So you're not done voting yet? Um I I am um, very sad to inform the board that um, Karen Sebastian, the head of the department, head for modern classical language and German teacher uh, here for uh, many years, 42 years total as an educator, 36 here in WSESU. She's worked at BAM, she's worked at the high school. Uh, Karen has informed me that she is going to retire at the end of the school year. Um, Karen has been a rock solid teacher for many years. She has done numerous exchanges. She has gone to Switzerland, she's gone to Costa Rica, she's gone to Germany, and done it all with, uh, with grace, uh, with dynamic um, affect towards the students, and uh, Karen is going to be sorely missed. And we're going to look hard to find somebody to take her spot, or we're not gonna replace her. Um, but I would ask the board accept Karen Sebastian's uh, resignation effective at the end of June. Sir motion. Will we accept the resignation of retirement of Karen Sebastian with regret? Second. Seconded? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And uh, I'm also, um, I can hear you. Uh, I'm also uh, very sad to um, announce that uh, Mr. Dunn has informed us that he will not be returning as the interim director next year. Um, Ray, in his short time here, has done a wonderful job of um, giving the Career Center a sense of purpose, giving the programs a sense of purpose. You look around this room, you can see um, how different thinkers are linked to Career Center programs. Um, Ray has an incredible respect for students. I've seen him work with a wide variety of students in a short time here. Um, effectively and, and with kindness and also with teachers. And uh, I can just say I'm going to miss Ray quite a bit. And I'm, I'm glad he lives in the same town as me um, so we can walk our dogs. But uh, I do ask that the board um, accept Ray's intent to resign at the end of this year. Or don't. That would be good. For I, think, uh, we, uh, I don't uh, think we want to. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a motion? I move that we accept the resignation of Ray done at the end of the school year with great regret. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right. Let's move to student council. And I'll give you give you a moment to. Um, I'm Gus. Gus Williams. I'm a junior. I'm Jackson Bittner, a senior. Alexander Miskovich, uh, also a junior, and recently elected vice president. Yay! Um, <laughs> um, tomorrow's a big day for us. Um, we have a few things going on. Um, last time we were here, we told the council that we were um, going to be volunteering at the overflow shelter. So tomorrow we were putting on a dinner there. Um, and we are also sending a group to the staff meeting tomorrow after school to um, present and continue our conversation about Long Block Ace. Um, that's about it. Yeah. What else are we going to talk about? And we just um, met with the planning policy for the student voice flag and plan to move forward with our criteria and assembling our board. Right, so we had our ex-vice president and ex-president at the 
uh, flag policy meeting and then we are also going to con continue with uh, the YATS group um, on meeting and collaborating with them which we did a little bit last year about proficiency based grading and getting a better understanding about that um, and to just be meeting with them since they are sort of a younger group and we are a mixed age group but um, holding talks about the retake policies and where proficiency is and the grading policies of UHS. Yep. Um, we're also planning on, we haven't set a date for it or anything, but we're planning on setting up um, another one of our student uh, lunches where we can meet and discuss um, things that people have found in the school, problems they have, things they want to talk about. Um, so we're going to probably want to set one of those up pretty soon because those seem to be effective ways for people to get their voice across. So. Just that's where we like go out and get pizza or something, and we'll bring, we'll put posters up um, around the school and bring and allow the student body to come to us, hold a lunch, um, and talk about what they want us to be doing or bridging to administration. So, anything else? That's all we got. Thank you. It's a lot. You guys are really busy. We're busy. Any questions? Quick question about the, the food pantry. Is that still is that going? Uh, so the project feed the thousands? Yeah. Yeah, so we wrapped that up. Um, I think we had close to twelve hundred dollars donated and um, six hundred ish yeah, food items. Yeah. Um, and so that was our final tally. Um, and we brought those to the drop in center. Or to actually yeah, a few different banks. Um, and that wrapped up in the beginning, beginning of January, mm -hmm. I think. So um, that was pretty good, pretty yeah. successful. Yeah, but we're going to continue our community outreach stuff with this um, dinner tomorrow night. Right. So we, we have three more tomorrow, and then three more scheduled for um, about four or five student council members to put on a dinner at the overflow shelter. to the Career Center. Sure. Uh, as Keith mentioned, we had started today with the BAM stores, give them an idea of what the Career Center has to offer, and I'd like to thank my staff, office staff, and teachers for putting together a great program. As Steve also mentioned, posters throughout. The office staff had the kids do a little inventory <coughs> as to the types of learners that they are and try to match up with some of our Career Center programs that they may be interested in when they were investigative, artistic, conventional, realistic, et cetera, and a little activity in the room. I believe it was Team Canis, I believe it was yep. today. Yep. So 35 of the kids were in the room while the other 35 were on tours, and then they swapped. And we had three tour leaders, myself being one of them, and I can say that my group was great, very well behaved, firm handshakes, eye contact, you know, as we introduced ourselves to begin with, and then toward the entire facility with some very inquisitive questions too that they had so I'm very interested as to when they could get started. So it's a, a great start to the BAM tours. We have our team tours tomorrow to finish up. So that went well. A couple other things. Uh, working with uh, Rick Hagee, the owner of Shepherd's Flock in Townsend, our FBLA chapter recently completed a community service project. The students purchased headband rings and use the wool that Rick provided from Shepherd's Flock to create earmuffs for those in need. And they created over 50 pairs of earmuffs and do donated them to uh, the Groundworks Collaborative in Brattleboro and also to 100 Night Shelter in Keene, New Hampshire. So they did a great job with that. Last Tuesday, Amy Anthony and myself uh, met with manufacturers from southeastern Vermont, primarily Wyndham and Windsor counties and the Agency of Education representatives to determine their needs relating to future employees. And we met up at Sonics Industries in Bellows Falls and discussed topics that included employability skills, technical skills, and academic skills that industry needed and were looking for for an entry level employee. It's great information for us to have as we adjust our curriculum, in this case in manufacturing, to meet the needs of our local business partners. So it was great. They shared, my group shared quite a few with employability skills being the top need, but everyone wants a great employee that's punctual and on time 
and interested and motivated to learn. And then second was technical skills that we provide within our areas. And then on to uh, the third one, academic skills, what they need put in the manufacturing industry to get started. And that ranged everything from reasoning skills and mathematics to doing right angle trig, Pythagorean theorem, things. So, so it was great to meet with them. We had uh, probably 30 people that met at Sonics Industries from 8 till noon. And one other thing, during February vacation, two of our construction students and their instructor, John DiMatteo, will be traveling to Bunnell, Florida to work with Habitat for Humanity. The students will be applying the skills that they've learned in the classroom and assist with the construction of a new home. So it's a thing that John's really motivated to do, my instructor. He initially wanted to go to Puerto Rico to help out down there with a longer two-week trip. We got him to shorten it a little bit there so that to go to Florida for during vacation week with the kids. He's got all the information for us, permission forms, insurance forms, etc. So really motivated and I would like to ask the school the same thing to extend school insurance for these students during the February vacation break that they're working down there. So moved. Second. One second. All right. Any questions about the trip? All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, Frank, do you have anything else from Central Office? Uh, nothing to add. Okay. Um, so as far, as far as my report goes, and I was just handed these at the beginning of the meeting, um, and we've never gotten these before, but the Vermont School Board Associations did um, some little certificates for all the school board members for recognition for school board recognition month, which was in January. So I have this one here for everybody's name on it. So I'll just pass these down and people can take theirs. So there's Anne's. Is every, but there's one for everybody here, so all the school board members. So, um, all right, great. Thank you. So those just gave hand to me at the beginning of the meeting. So that was very nice of the school board association to recognize us in some way. Um, and that's all that I had related to our meeting. So that's it for administrative reports. Um, unfinished business, the only thing we have listed under unfinished business is Act 46 discussion, which we sort of had as part of the opening discussion. So unless there's any other questions related to Act 46 that we need to cover, there's nothing there. And un there's nothing listed under new business, but there are a couple of executive session matters that are, um, there's no action needed, but there's an F there, FYI stuff, so. Maybe we can go into executive session, go into the other room, and um, it'll be the board and just you, Steve. Is anybody else? Uh, Grace Hunter for private. Grace Hunter for private. Okay. Grace Hunter for private. So we'll do the executive session for that, and then we'll come out and just close the meeting so everybody else could be dismissed. So um, is there a motion to go into executive session for personnel, personnel, personnel information matter? So I'll move. Second. One second. All there? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. So we are in executive session. Let's head into the